everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm really excited to bring you this mixed media bucket. I put a coat or a couple coats of Kills 2 on this bucket to prime it. Now, I love texture, but it's really difficult to put texture, use texture paste and stencil texture paste onto a surface that is round and wobbly. And you can go to smaller stencils and that might work a little bit better. You can use spray temporary adhesives, but you know, it's just so much, it's very difficult to do. So I'm going to put the texture paste onto tissue paper. I'm cutting that tissue paper, the 12 by 12 size, and you can see underneath it, I've got packaging from my stenciling. You want to be able to have it on a piece of cardboard or plastic or something that you can just move it to a place to dry because the tissue paper will get um, very fragile once it's wet and you don't want to have to lift it and have it sag and maybe rip on you. I'm using TCW uh, white modeling paste with a key card, which is my favorite way to apply the modeling paste. I am putting it on fairly thin and the stencil I'm using is called Damask because I'm going for a vintage theme. And this one, the scale of it, everything about it is just absolutely perfect for the feel that I want. So while I have this stencil out and the modeling paste out, I actually do several sheets of this pattern. And any extra that I don't use for my project, I will save in my stash. So I take it with the paper that's underneath it, move it and let it dry for several hours. I do not use a heat tool on it. Now, once it's dry, I am able to look at this and identify which motifs of it I want to do. I can cut them apart, which I've done here, and I tape them on the can to figure out where I want to put them and if I like the composition. And you know me, I love being able to audition what I'm doing. I'm very visual, I need to see it, I need to be able to manipulate it to make those decisions. And when you do the stenciling with modeling paste on tissue paper, you have complete and total freedom to doing that. Now here, uh, now that I know what, pot, what elements I want, and how many, I am using the water cutting technique and water cutting the excess off. It's not as big a deal because I'm going to colorize everything on here, but if I was gluing that on to a background that was already colored, I would want to minimize, you know, so people wouldn't necessarily see where the tissue paper ended and the background began. Using a lot of fluid matte medium is key to getting that tissue paper to go completely translucent, which is more important the darker your background is. Or if you're, you know, not color, if you've colorized it before. You can use a pair of scissors to cut with, cut this out. I'm just faster doing this. I'm using a long liner brush and I'm also using more water than when I use with a napkin. So here I'm cutting apart this motif. I've decided that I don't want the whole thing here. I just want this bottom piece and I will save. All those little bits that I don't use will be saved for another project and they will go into my stash. And I continue to glue it on. And I apologize, it's white on white and I get it, You can't. it's very difficult to see. Now, one thing that you, I will say here, because I'm gluing this down to a non-porous metal surface, 
it does take longer to dry than if I was gluing it down on paper that breathes from both sides. And when you use the heat tool on the metal can, it gets hot. And so I was leaning more towards letting it dry naturally. Now comes the part where I'm going to be mixing the colors right on the bucket. I am using Prussian blue and Naples yellow. Now the Naples yellow that I have here is not my usual or my favorite Naples yellow. I wasn't able to get my Liquitex basic Naples at yellow. It was continually out of stock. So I bought the Artist Loft one, which is lighter, but if I add a little bit of yellow oxide to it, I get pretty much the color that I want. And I love mixing it right onto the surface because it gives you the, those variations. Some is more yellow, some is more blue, some turns more that lovely teal color that I am loving. I'm using a combination of my hands and my fingers to rub it into the texture as well as a makeup sponge. I have said it before, I am not a neat crafter. By the time I'm done, I am lucky if I don't have paint everywhere. But there's just something so satisfying about getting painty. In the rim, I'll take a brush to get underneath that lip. I am not trying to make this one tone. I don't want it one tone. I want those variations because that's what's going to make this piece so very interesting. Now, you could take this and make this on a canvas or on an art journal page. You can take some of the elements, some of the techniques. Here I am using my thickened gesso and I'm using a sink liner and I'm stamping this texture onto the bucket where the modeling paste is not. And yes, if I had done this before, I wouldn't have to colorize, go through the colorization step. But I didn't know that I wanted to add this element at the time. The thought didn't occur to me. So you just kind of go with the flow. But I could have definitely put on the tissue paper embellishments and then stamped this and then colorized it all in one step. Instead, you're going to see me come in and apply the same Prussian blue and Naples yellow on top of this second type of texture that I've added. And that's why I love it because now we have the, the modeling paste adds one level of texture, this adds another, and it just adds to the overall vintage, old world feel that I'm going for. The texture is hard to see. Um, doing an awkward, doing something with this size and shape um, is awkward. And, you know, I don't have the best camera views, so I apologize for that. But hopefully you get the gist. Now, I want to bring out that texture. So I'm using the Ranger blending foams. And I first went and I applied it with the Prussian blue. Now I'm coming in with, I'm not sure if this is red oxide or burnt sienna. And I'm loving how that's looking. And I go back to more Prussian blue, back to more red oxide. 
then you're going to see me right away. I'm going, I grab some gold to build up. I want that patina kind of look. I want a little bit of shimmer on there. Now patina is usually that coppery color, so I could have used copper or bronze, but when I applied the bronze that I had, I really didn't like it. And so I went with the gold and with the red oxide underneath it, it's giving me the effect that I like. And in the end, you got to make the artist happy. And I just keep going between the Prussian blue and the gold and the red oxide till I get exactly the look I'm looking for. bringing out the rims and the, the indentations on the bucket as well as the texture that I put on. Now we're moving to adding um, some cloth. This is rice paper that I got from ninniesnapkins.com. It is the same weight as the Stamperia rice paper. And I was given some of this to test it out with my laser printer. It has a shiny side and a duller side. I am printing on the dull side. It is intended for inkjet printers, which I believe they print on, I'm not sure what the instructions are, but I'm printing on the dull side. Now I am cutting this to fit the inside you know, where I want the clocks. I'm going to put some clocks on this because it's going to be a memory bucket or a bucket list bucket, and I want that clock motif. Now I have a fairly, you know, about an inch border all the way around. You don't want to run the rice paper right to the edge. Anytime I've done that, either with rice paper or tissue paper, it has jammed. So you're better off cutting it and printing it out several times. I print it out so I can see where the pattern is going to go. You want to avoid putting tape too much in because you do not want the pattern to be printed on the tape. And then I'm cutting out the elements. Just FYI, it's easier to cut out the elements with rice paper if you leave the copy paper attached as opposed to peeling off the rice paper, and then cutting it. It is in my plans to do a video showing exactly how to print on tissue paper and rice paper, and I will bring out, this will be done in more detail. Now I'm coming to glue these down, and you see me take that rice paper and I spray it with water. And then I'm putting it in, I've used a lot of matte fluid medium, my Liquitex Basics matte fluid medium, and then I put some on top. This helps it goes go more translucent. I guess that little spritz of water I find really helps it out, kind of trial and error. You don't want too much water because you're gonna dilute the adhesion, but I do want this to go fairly translucent. I want the color from behind the bucket, the golds, the browns, the, the Prussian blue to shine through. When you're using gluing down tissue paper or rice paper, you do want to use a liberal amount of matte medium. If you don't have the fluid medium, you can take the gel medium and liquid it, add a little water. Rice paper here, I chose to do print this on rice paper as opposed to tissue paper because I wanted it to be a little sturdier and I like the effect. Rice paper has different markings than tissue paper. 
but if all you have is tissue paper, go with that. Absolutely loving how this has turned out. It has exceeded the vision that I started with in my head. Now I'm gluing down the sentiment that I have printed and I'm spraying that as well with water and I apologize that this is off camera but I do show you in a minute I show you doing the top of the can now this is I said this was going to be a memory bucket or a bucket list bucket and so that's why there's the clock and the time reference and the quote that I've chosen is we all have a time machine dreams take us forward memories take us back and the idea is either you on strips of paper you write memories throughout the year and then you can read them on New Year's Eve or when you're having a bad day <laughs> or you could put things you want to do when you retire or it can just hold all your bucket list and I think I'll be print cutting out some tags with my silhouette cameo and putting that in the bucket Your liberal amount of matte medium fluid medium I've sprayed it I've folded it in half to mark where the to just center it on here the first part of the quote I'm putting at the top and the bottom and the se second part of the quotes I'm putting at the bottom now you can see that some places didn't quite go translucent now part of that is because it's not 100% dry because it takes so long to dry on a metal surface but I'm showing you that you can take the colors from the background and colorize it just add you're doing just a little bit of a wash you don't want anything you don't want to choose any paints that are too opaque and if I get too dark I'm wiping it off with a baby wipe I'm being gentle the ink or the the ink from the bit was printed on there seems fairly stable I'm very happy with that it didn't rub off at all but you know I'm still going to be very gentle with it and then I'm adding a little bit of coloring on the clock when I see how well that rice paper is taking that color and showing the color I'm thinking I didn't need to print this with color the clocks I could have just done it black and white and then added the color at this point. So you can print out flowers and do it in black and white and then paint them the colors that you want them. So using rice paper or tissue paper is a great way to work add embellishments, add focal images to a round or awkward shaped surface. If I wanted the clocks to stand out, I would shade around them with the straight up Prussian blue or maybe some black. I haven't decided if I want them to stand out more or not. Just adding more color, tweaking it. And here we have the finished product. I absolutely love it. I plan to sell this in, you know, the local craft fair. I don't think it's going to be around for a long time. But if it is, if it doesn't sell, I won't be too sad either. If you like this project, give me a thumbs up. Share this with your creative friends. Give this a try either on a bucket or on an art journal page or canvas. Be sure to come into my Facebook group and share it with me. Here are some close-ups of the finished project. Thanks so much for joining me. Keep creating.